Stephen examined a hundred years of violent and nonviolent resistant movements in their book, Why Civil Resistance Works. They concluded that nonviolent movements succeeded twice as often as violent uprisings. Violent movements work, they noted, primarily in civil wars or in ending foreign occupations. Nonviolent movements appeal to those within the power structure, especially the police and civil servants, who are cognizant of the corruption and decadence of the power elite and are willing, in the end, to abandon them. And we only need 1 to 5 percent of the population actively working for the overthrow of this system. Let me use that word overthrow again for the Homeland Security people in the room. Christopher Hedges on the myth of human progress and the collapse of complex civilizations. Now that was a mouthful. Now I'm not going to attempt to make a critique of everything Mr. Hedges said because quite frankly he's smarter than me. And that was an enormous speech. It was a beautiful speech, and he said a lot. And I will say that I'm a big fan of Mr. Hedges, and I agree with him. I am a fellow progressive. I am a fellow uh, crit critic of civilization and of mankind. And I'm going to uh, just go over a couple of points. Number one, he made a point regarding the end of the world, almost to the fact that we're doomed. And he made the point that this was the first time that, that our civilization not only will collapse, but the whole world will die with us. Now, I think that's a reach. Not a little bit of a reach, a major reach to say that human beings are going to destroy the earth. Now, I, do, I don't agree with what Mr. Limbaugh, who's a right-wing uh, radio host, who said that we couldn't destroy the earth even if we wanted to. I don't know if I believe that. I think if we went off and we blew up every nuclear bomb that we ever had, I, I think the earth would be in pieces all over. I think we could do that. I think we have the power to do that. And I hope nobody does. But that's not what Mr. Hedges is saying. Mr. Hedges is saying, just because we fish the earth, dump pollutants, so forth and so on, we're going to completely annihilate the earth. I just don't buy it. And I don't know where he gets the, um, not the cojones, where he gets the knowledge to say that. He's not a scientist. Now, the world's greatest scientist, a man named James Lovelock, the man who devised the Gaia hypothesis, he's already spoke on this issue. He says that we're about 100 years from billions and billions and billions of people dying. He's saying that we can't stop global warming, that we can't stop climate change, that it's coming. I mean, he's 94 years old. He's invented a thousand different things. He's like Leonardo da, Leonardo da Vinci living up there in uh, England somewhere. And I have to take him at his word. But he says at best, we'll have a billion people left after all that. At worst, a hundred million. That's a far cry from the doom of the planet. That's a far cry from that. So, I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see what happening, what Mr. Hedges said. I, I think that uh, we're going to survive. Now, is that going to be, is that going to be fun? Do my great grandkids, if I have any, are they, do they have something to look forward to? Probably not. Now, the other part that kind of disturbed me is he spent about 35, 40 minutes going into his faith in the irrational. 
He, he quoted people from the Holocaust. He quoted, he quoted various speakers. And he is pretty much saying that, you know, we need something irrational. We need to have faith. And he pretty much argued for faith. Which, I don't know what you need faith for. I really don't. I mean, I get out here, and this is not the prettiest place in California that I've ever been. Some of it's ratty. Some of it looks a little ugly in places. But this is still a beautiful place. And as I've, I've traveled through the 35 or 40 different states here in the last couple of years, I've seen nothing but beauty everywhere I go. I've seen deers run up out of the nowhere and go up and feed, and elk, and opossums, and raccoons, and, and dogs, and people, and little children. I don't know what I need faith to get up and be a part of that every day. I really don't. I don't see the point in it. I don't see the point in changing anything. It's beautiful to be alive, and if I live whatever I'm supposed to be living, even if it's just the three score and ten that talks about in the talks about in the Bible that means I got 17 more eight, 16 more years to go I can live with that that don't sound so bad you know I don't I don't cry every night before the bed that I'm going to become unconscious so I, I really don't see the difference so I, I don't know why we need faith and I don't know I, I don't I don't empathize that now what I do like about the guy is that he has passion for left-wing causes. He's a well-spoken progressive. And he will give you a dose of reality. He will give you a dose of what's going on. He's not going to give you all this happy horse shit that everything's fine and nothing needs to be done. Because things need to be done. Quite literally, we need to reduce our carbon footprint. We need to live in urban areas and make better plans and better utilize our resources that we have on the planet and we need to plan better and centralize and plan we need to use centralized techniques and we use, need to use entrepreneurial techniques we need to do both we need both the libertarians and we need both the, the planners we need them both they're both great things and we need them both we don't need to just throw one out without the other and we need to quit all this fighting and work together. That's what we need to do. And I don't think we need some genius to figure it out. I think we can still do it. But something needs to be done. And if it doesn't happen, if Mr. Lovelock is right, we're going to go down to half a billion people. We're going we're gonna to have another flood. Just like the flood myth in the Bible. That's not based on nothing. That happened. That happened 13,000 years ago. There was a major flood. It wasn't, it wasn't in the Bible. It didn't happen because people were wicked and all that stuff. Uh, it happened. It wasn't exactly the way it says, but, you know, millions of people died. There was some kind of natural disaster, just like there's going to be natural disasters anyway. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. So, in other words, enjoy yourself. Enjoy his speech. He's a great man. I like him. I didn't mean to be negative. I just had a few points. Thank you.